Ah, the Saints, the burned-out, gifted kid of the AFL in which their potential could be reached at any moment, but until then it kind of looked at as a disappointment. Hi, I'm Daz. Welcome to the Supercoach Preview of the Saints. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I'd really appreciate it. Have hit 400, which is genuinely mind-boggling. I actually can't really believe it. I know I say things like I'm trying to reach these numbers by a particular time, in which case 500 before round one has been the sort of most consistent goal I've had in the last couple of weeks, but... The actual thought of potentially getting there is, I think, more overwhelming than even I give it credit for, but I'm generally astounded that you guys are hopefully enjoying what I'm saying and what's going on and want to be along for the ride, so a quick thank you here, probably a shorter thank you than you guys deserve, but just know that I do absolutely appreciate it, and I don't want to bog these videos down too much, so hopefully I can do a more extended one with the weekend video, but I just want to talk about the Saints here, but a thank you anyway. Got a lot to prove the Saners, but their defense looks uh, not great from a super coach standard. That's why I do not have a best pick in the slightest. I have got so many for the no chance. So I'm going to go through my watch list player pretty, pretty quickly. And that is Nazaya Wanganin Miller right now. He didn't have the most super coach friendly game in his draft year. But with his speed outside class and the fact that Brad Hill looks like he is more comfortable on a halfback flank than a wing, I still think they've got that wing option. Jack Sinclair was really improved last year and looks like he could take a back pocket spot as well. And they've got a couple of guys on their list that I want to talk about in the no chance that really, really need to come across as almost career-defining years for them or maybe career-shaping years, who knows. But if what... The best ability is availability, as we know for our rookies. It's something that I'll preach uh, at the start of the year until the cows come home. And that's what needs to happen. So if Naziah can get in, he should be well. He makes his possessions count, which is fantastic. And the more comfortable he gets, I think the more he'll score. So definitely one to watch. This is a, uh, a trio of pain here for the no chance. So I'm actually going to put them all in the one little frame bit over there. But Hunter Clark, Nick Caulfield, and Brad Hill. What, what can I say? Clark and Caulfield were the higher draft picks that were meant to deliver the world, but right now I've only delivered an Atlas. I know it sounds harsh, but um, Caulfield was reportedly shopped around and no takers. No one was serious enough to go and chase him hard. Hunter Clark's been a bit more of a tease than I think Caulfield has. He looks like he can break out, but at what point do we sit around and go, okay, this guy can break out? I hope it's this year. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, he's a waste or he's washed or anything like that, but the patience from St. Kilda needs to begin running out on these guys that they've put this investment in. This is a ruthless business, and at the end of the day, they were taken as high as they were, albeit in not a great draft class, but the Saints need some reward for effort here. So is it their development that's going wrong? Did they make the wrong selections? On paper, it doesn't look like it, but Caulfield and Clark... They need to get their butts into gear, if we're being completely honest. And Brad Hill, now, if you're thinking no one has ever had Brad Hill in their team, uh, Smithy has, my mate Smithy, who will be doing the draft dissections with me, and I look forward to bringing that up with him when we do those. But as right as he was about Jack Zebel, and he's been right more than I give him credit for in these videos about, you know, some real shrewd super coach picks, whether it's draft or classic, which is why I'm having him on for the draft videos. Uh, he started Brad Hill last year, and that makes me happy. So maybe this one is a no chance just for one person. So sucked in, Smid, but he's a good man. You can call Wanganin Miller at the cash cow if you like. I'm actually going to go with Oscar Adams now. He's got the defensive ruck tag, so the DPP, huge tick. But I think St. Kilda need him more as that centre-half back, in which he does have experience and played in his draft year. Apart from Dougal Howard, they don't really have a lot. James Frawley and Jake Carlisle are both not in the team anymore, as we know, both retired. So, who plays the secondary back role? Definitely can be Adams. Again, the best availability is... Um, uh, sorry, the best ability is availability. I'll learn how to talk, that's fine. And at 102k, you can't knock that down at all. So, one to watch. And if he becomes as structurally as important as I believe that he can be, he's going to be there for many, many weeks. So, sure, we're keeping an eye out on when he gets in the team, but once he's there, he's going to be extremely difficult to kick out of the side. No one... Maybe Smithy, but no one is a bigger fan of Jack Steele than me. This man is just simply extraordinary. And the reason why he needs to be a lock in, I think, all teams is that he scores in three different ways. He scores by finding the footy, he kicks goals, and he tackles. 
That is a trifecta of ways. If he's only picking up, you know, 15 disposals in the game and, like, getting tagged, he might, he'll pick up his 8 to 12 tackles and he'll still be able to get you to maybe, you know, a low 100, which is okay. We can't expect players to be perfect, but he's also not going to be that kind of player with those three ways to score that he's going to fall a lot in price. Whether you might look at a Bont or a Walsh or a Mitchell or a Laird maybe or a Merritt, these guys could fall in price depending on how their midfield meshes. Jack Steele is put into that midfield and will not leave. Solo captain, genuine star. Love the man. Get him in your team. I know a lot of people are talking about Dan Hanabry, but, but no, he's not going anywhere near my side. So I don't actually have anyone on my watch list. I don't really give a damn about the rest of St. Kilda's midfield. And that can sound harsh because you've got guys like Brad Crouch and Zach Jones and these guys, but... They're not relevant enough for me to talk about, so let's just get into the no chance, and that is everyone else, uh, surprisingly, I know, but that's, yeah, watch list, no chance, none of them, toss them out, St. Kilda's midfield desperately needs X-Factor in it, and they simply don't have it, um, I'm actually not really going to go for a cash cow for their midfield either, I know, again, it sounds kind of harsh, and I'm not saying that the Saints are a rabble or anything like that, but they've got better options elsewhere on the ground, in my opinion. Not going to talk about Paddy Ryder in this bit, but Rowan Marshall is becoming a popular R2 option in order to save about 80 to 150k and find it elsewhere. Now, Marshall, according to a tweet that if I manage to find it, will be here. And if I don't manage to find it, I do apologize. But it was Marshall with and without Ryder um, is an average difference of about 21 points, which is huge, which is absolutely massive. So... What needs to be taken into account here is, are you betting on Marshall taking that step with Ryder there? Because if Ryder's fit, he plays. St. Kilda as a team look better with Ryder in it. They've got the extra weapon of sending Marshall forward with Membry, maybe Battle, and of course, Max King there is, is there as well. So, Marshall with Ryder, are you happy with that? If not, don't start him and just pick him up in your draft. Best pick for St. Kilda's forward line is no one. They're not the most relevant team. I don't really know what else to tell you, but I'm not. No one really stands out on that page. And if you're wondering where Jade Gresham is, uh, he's on the watch list because he's still dealing with a niggle, still on light training duties as of the time of this recording. And at that price fully fit, you'd be silly not to start him. But he's not fully fit yet. So that's the epitome of what the watch list is about. If he can prove to himself, us, and of course, the St. Kilda Footy Club, more important than our super coach players, that he can be at his best, then that half forward midfield role, get your, seven, uh, your 70s, your 80s, explode for a few games, maybe get a ton, get yourself up to about 400k, cash him in and maybe go for a top end um, player. You're looking at maybe a Taranto after Toby Green comes back, who will fall a bit in price and play more midfield time when Toby comes back, will definitely be a player to look at, or maybe, you know, a stringer or a wing guard, or someone like that, might come through and do beautifully. And of course, with the DPP rules, you might be getting a midfielder like a Bontempelli or a Fife, who might end up getting that midfield forward status, or a danger field maybe, and maybe he can work it that way. But fully fit, he's a starter, but he's a watch list for me. No chance, the rest of them, are you really looking at any other St. Kilda forwards? Are you really? So for Daz's final word, I've got Oscar Adams and Jack Steele in my side at the moment. Adams on the bench, Steele as my M2. Who are you guys considering? Comment below, let me know. Have I been harsh on too many St. Kilda players? Who have I been harsh on? Comment below, let me know as well. I hope you guys have been fantastic. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I will see you for the Sydney, West Coast, and Western Bulldogs previews. Then the previews are done. I've got a special video coming after that. I've then got the draft dissection, so you'll get the midfield, defense, ruck, and forwards all in a week. So either on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, or a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Non-Supercoach videos are coming as well. Tomorrow at the time of this being posted will be out as well. Looking forward to all of that, but I'm going to let you go now, guys. Take it easy. Be well. Be safe. Goodbye.